Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our CIA Top 10 Answers for Culinary Arts Students. My name is Dominic Barano, Director of Admissions at the Culinary Institute of America. This presentation will provide an overview of our culinary arts program and answer the top 10 most frequently asked questions. It is geared to primarily culinary arts students, but if you are interested in baking and pastry, please feel free to listen along. As the world's premier culinary college and leader in the food and hospitality industry, we wish we had the chance to host you on our beautiful campus. But for today, we are committed to providing you with helpful information so you can learn all the amazing things happening on our campus. Today, we are joined by our very special guest, Robert Tremblay, admissions counselor for the Culinary Institute of America. Now, without further ado, let's give a warm round of virtual applause to Robert. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Dom, for uh introducing me so well. I'm really excited to get to talk with all of you prospective students about our amazing programs and talk to you about it from the perspective of being a culinary arts student. As Dom mentioned, my name is Robert Tremblay. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at the college. I am also a graduate from the school. I graduated in 2010 with my associate's degree in culinary arts. After graduating, I went on to work at Morimoto in Manhattan. So those of you familiar with the show Iron Chef on the Food Network, the Japanese chef that competes in that show is who I worked for for the first few years out of school. After that, I went down to Baltimore, Maryland and managed a restaurant called the Blue Moon Cafe, which was on Diners, Drivers and Dives a few years ago. And they were most famous for their Captain Crunch French toast. About six years ago, I came back to the college and started working in a capacity of admissions, working with students to help realize their culinary and bacon and pastry art dreams. So like I said, really excited to get to speak with all of you and uh, ready to dive right in. Great. I have to attest to Robert's um, Captain Crunch uh, French toast. It is, it, it will change your life. It is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Um, so Robert, we're really excited to speak to you. So we'll, let's dive right in. So tell us a little bit about this different CIA campuses, um, what the different offerings are at each of the campuses. Sure, uh, we actually have four campuses available for students. Our main campus is located um, in Hyde Park, New York. That's the large picture that's right there in the center. It's located directly on the Hudson River, which is about two hours north from New York City. So we have great access to really one of the food meccas of the world in New York City. At this main campus, we offer both our two-year associate degrees as well as our four-year bachelor's degrees. So students are able to go through their entire college career with with us uh, at this campus. Over to the top left of the screen, you'll see our California campus, which is located in Northern California, right in the heart of Napa Valley. And at this campus, we offer the opportunity for students to complete our two-year associate's degree in either culinary arts or bacon and pastry arts. Below that is our San Antonio campus, which is right in the heart of downtown San Antonio. It's actually located in the historic Pearl Brewery site, which is a really famous area of San Antonio. And at that campus, we also offer our two-year associate's degree program. And then at the very bottom is our international campus, which is actually located in Singapore. And pretty unique campus because students through our bachelor's program can actually spend 15 weeks focusing their studies in Asian cuisines uh, during the, one of the concentration parts of the program. So we'll have some more details about that in just a little bit. Great. Um, what are the degree offerings for culinary arts students specifically at the CIA? Absolutely. So as a culinary arts student, you're actually going to have access to um, all of the degree programs that we offer. We offer a two-year associate's degree as well as a four-year bachelor's degree. And now we do also offer master's degrees for students. So you'll be able to go through the entire gamut of our programs as a culinary arts student. As things relate to the associate's degree program, as I mentioned, this is two years in length. And for our culinary arts students, you're actually going to be spending over 1300 hours doing hands-on work in our kitchens on campus. So the associate's program is very much geared towards the hands-on curriculum. So students will do everything from their core fundamentals, starting off learning knife cuts, stocks, sauces, individual cooking techniques. And then from there, they're gonna progress into meat and fish fabrication, where they're going to actually learn how to to 
you break down, identify, and butcher different types of meats and different types of fish. And then from there, they're going to expand into international cuisines, where you'll cover studies of cuisines of Asia, cuisines of the Mediterranean, as well as cuisines of the Americas, which covers both North America and South America, as well as Latin America. So you're really covering uh, really a world of cuisine as you progress through the program. And then at the very end of the program, from your hands-on perspective, students will get to spend an entire semester working in our world-renowned restaurants, which are open to the public and are uh, right on our campus. So during that time, students will actually spend time in both the back of the house working as the cooks, but they'll also spend time in the front of the house working as, as the wait staff and serving tables and interacting with guests so that students will not only understand what goes on in the back of the house of the restaurant, but also stepping into the front to see where the money in a business like that actually comes from. In addition to those hands-on classes, students will also have some academic coursework that they'll take where they'll focus on culinary math, uh, they'll focus on menu development, they'll even get into food safety as well as a class called gastronomy which is a really cool class at the very start of the program where students will actually get to study the sociability of food and the way that people interact with it on both a physiological and emotional level so you're really getting a very well-rounded education with regard to the associate's degree so that when students leave this program they're ready to step out into restaurants and, and really take off from there in addition to the associate's degrees, as I mentioned, we do also offer fully accredited bachelor's degrees. The first three choices that you see there, the major of Applied Food Studies, Culinary Science, and Food Business Management. Those are great options because they include the full hands-on curriculum that we covered in our associate's degree. So again, covering everything from your core fundamentals all the way up through international cuisines and working in the campus restaurants. But also during this time, students are going to get to focus in the areas of study that they want to attack when they step out into their respective fields, whether it's working in Applied Food Studies, which deals a lot with food policy, and students that may want to become educators, uh, food lawmakers, working as lobbyists, getting involved with the FDA, uh, really putting professionally trained chefs in positions where they can have a real impact on the world of food moving forward. For our culinary science students, that really falls heavily into research and development. Students that want to really work on the cutting edge of food design, working with new flavors, understanding how to break food down to a molecular level and then be able to put it back together again. We've actually had students from this program go on to work for companies like McCormick Spices, Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, um, Hellman's Food Products. So really a lot of diverse and unique opportunities coming out of that part of the industry. And then with food business, we have a huge culture of students that want to be entrepreneurs, that want to run their own businesses and run other people's businesses. So understanding food business is a dynamic opportunity for our students to really take the, the leadership of this industry forward into the future and uh, really make some great opportunities for themselves. And then last but definitely not least is our hospitality management program, which is a little unique because of course, for students going through this program, they wanna focus on that hospitality side of things. They wanna understand how to interact with customers, how to manage that side of the, the restaurant or the hotels per, per se for what they're going into. But this program is unique because it also offers 30 food and beverage credits that are going to be taken in culinary arts throughout this program, uh, which is over 10 times more than any other hospitality program in the country. So it's a really important thing to understand that being able to speak both languages of knowing what goes on in the back of the house, as well as what goes on in the front of the house really makes a difference for students as they're starting to look for jobs and step out into the industry. And then, as I mentioned before, we do also offer master's degree programs. So our master's are in food business and wine management. The food business program is 30 credits and takes just about two years to complete. Uh, one of the great things about this program is that it's offered predominantly online. So it's a really flexible option for students that are working full time in the industry to build their credentials further. And then our wine management program is again 30 credits, but this program only takes 30 weeks to complete. So it's literally a two semester master's degree program. If you can believe that, it takes only those two semesters. So you literally start in September and then you'll be graduated in April of the following year. Um, but this is located at our campus in California. So right in the heart of Napa Valley and wine country where students will get a really immersive program to, uh, to master their skills in wine management. 
Fantastic. Um, so for our next question, Robert, um, what does a typical day look like for a CIA student um, in their culinary class, maybe inside of the kitchen as well as maybe like um, um, uh, inside of a classroom as well? Sure. This is certainly one of the those important questions. I know for myself uh, coming into the program, you know, kind of getting an idea of of what a class would look like. You know, I, I took classes, you know, traditional classes and things like that. But, you know, stepping into a kitchen is a different kind of layout for a student's schedule. Um, and first and foremost, important thing to know is that students will either be given an AM schedule or a PM schedule for for their hands-on classes and their culinary classes. So students will either start their class at about 7 a.m. and go to about 1.30 in the afternoon, or they'll start their class at about two o'clock in the afternoon and go to about 8.30 at night. So um, those are kind of the, the makeup of the schedule that you'll have coming into the program. But really your classes start the night before when you're completing your homework assignment for, for the next day's class. And really what those homework assignments are geared toward is preparation for what you're gonna be working on the next day. So you'll be doing key terms that directly relate to the content that you're gonna be cooking in class the next day. And then you'll also be making timelines for yourself. So you'll be planning out minute by minute what's going on in the kitchen the next day so that when you come in, you'll have a game plan ready and raring to go so that you know what your steps are. You know what you're gonna be working on from, from point A to point B and to the completion of what you're cooking. Once you get into class, you'll probably get in about a half an hour before the class time actually begins so that you can begin to set up your station, make sure everything's in order. Um, and then from there, you'll sit down to a uh, introductory lecture to the day. So the chef instructor will go over what you're gonna be making, cover some of the key terms that you did the night before. And then from there, you're gonna roll right into production where you're gonna go back, set up your station, Chef will call everybody over for a chef demonstration where they're gonna demonstrate everything that you're gonna be making that day. You'll take your notes, you'll write down the key elements to what you're gonna be working on, and then you're gonna go back to your station and, and mimic what the chef instructor showed you in the demonstration. So you're, you're seeing, you're doing, and you're also reading about ahead of time. So you're getting multiple forms of contact with the uh, information that you're going to be working with. And then one of the most important parts of the day is the review of what you made. So everything that you cook in one of your classes, you're gonna bring to the chef instructor for them to taste, evaluate, and give you feedback on. So it's really important to know that everything you make, you're gonna know how you did on it. At the end of every day, you're gonna kind of know what's, where you stand with the different techniques, with understanding flavor profiles. So all of those elements were really built together. And then after you finish your production for the day, uh, you'll take a break, you'll go for lunch, and then after lunch, you'll come back, clean up uh, the kitchen because sanitation is a really crucial and important part of the restaurant industry. So you'll get a full lecture and full uh, teaching on how to keep everything clean. Um, and then from there, you'll have a wrap up lecture to roll into the next day. Um, and that's that's essentially how the classes will, will build into each other. So a lot of preparation goes into each and every day. Um, and it's a really important element is, is that preparation. So um, really a great part of, of the building blocks of the program. And then I believe, Dom, you asked about some of the academic classes. Um, oh, yeah. And they're, they're structured very similar to a, um, a, a traditional liberal arts college in that sense. You'll have you know, two or three classes on a given academic day where they'll be spread out over the course of, of that day. And they'll usually be about 50 minute classes. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they're usually a lab class, so they may be a little bit longer. Um, but you'll build academic schedule classes with your academic advisor. Um, so you'll know going into each semester what your schedule is going to be like for those academic classes. So you know, you'll have that, that partnership and that pairing with your academic advisor to really help build out your schedules throughout the year. So um, a question that we get often, um, Robert, is um, do you need to have culinary experience to attend the CI, whether it be at a, you know, a technical high school, a BOCES program, or, or actually in the restaurant industry? Is that required for the admissions process? Another really important question that I'm, I'm glad you brought up, Don, because this is a question that I get a lot from students. You know, 
worried about their experience coming into the program. We don't require experience for students to be admitted to the college. It's really one of those things that, you know, we, we bring students in because we're going to teach you from start to finish the CIA way of cooking. So, you know, having experience is definitely a great step up. Um, you want your experience so that you, you know this is what you want to do. And whether that comes from being in a high school culinary program, working in the industry, or just cooking at home like a madman like I did growing up. Um, in high school, I was always cooking, so that was something that was always a passion of mine. Um, however, you're able to solidify that this is the choice for you and that this is the career path that you want to go into, um, that's the most important thing with having some experience. But, you know, as a student coming into the program, I had very limited experience uh, before starting. And like I said, you're going to learn everything the CIA way from your knife cuts and your stocks all the way up to restaurant style service. So um, all really important elements. And really another element that's important is the idea that when I mentioned those restaurants is that you're gonna get to work in these restaurants for a full semester. So these are just a few of the names of the restaurants that we have at our campuses, uh, but these are specifically at the New York campus. And like I said before, you're gonna spend time in both the back of the house and the front of the house for these programs. So getting really well-versed in the industry, um, you're gonna gain that experience through the program, both on our campus and then as well through the internship program, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so for question five, Robert, um, internships are obviously super important, not only for, um, you know, building experience, but also like building your resume. Um, does the CIA offer internship and what kind of opportunities are available for our students? Absolutely. This, I think, is one of the most important parts of the program and, and what CIA gives its students, um, is that every student going through our undergrad programs will complete a internship. Um, for 15 weeks, you'll work full-time in the industry at one of our approved locations. And we have, in fact, over 2,000 approved locations uh, for the internship portion of the program. So they vary from options like McCormick Spices to working for Disney directly. I know a lot of my friends went and worked for Disney because they actually offer free housing for interns to be able to live and work down there and, and work in some of the, the best restaurants in the country that are located in those parks. And I don't know if you've been to Disney World before, Dom, but personally, I think you can go to Disney World and just eat your way through the parks and, and have a pretty good time. So Absolutely. pretty awesome experience for, uh, for students to be a part of. Um, and then from there, we step up into a lot of different areas and especially fine dining. Um, 11 Madison Park is one of the greatest restaurants in the country. And then we look at the Thomas Keller Restaurant Group, which is right there in the center. Um, I don't know if any of the young chefs watching know who Thomas Keller is, but if you, if you don't, um, definitely start reading up because Thomas Keller is arguably the best chef in the entire country. And he, in fact, is a, a member of our board of trustees, so he plays a big role um, in, in the development of CIA and the connection we have with, with the school and him. Um, but we have students that go to his restaurants regularly for their internships as well as for full-time employment. Um, the crown jewel of his restaurant group is called the French Laundry, which is located out in Napa Valley, California. I personally have not had the opportunity to dine there because traditionally they have about a six month wait list to get a table there. And when you do, it's gonna cost anywhere between two and $300 to eat there. Um, I don't know about any of you, but any restaurant that has a wait like that and has a, has a average bill that size is probably doing a lot of things right and they do just about everything right in those restaurants. So uh, really dynamic opportunities for our students to, to get that real world experience while they're still going through the program. Great. Um, a lot of our students, and I can even see through the questions um, that are coming in, Robert, um, that a lot of them want to run their own restaurant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a question we often get is what kind of class offerings does the CIR offer to help get students started? Is there any opportunities while they're a student to learn about running and operating their own, you know, their own facility? Absolutely. There, there are truly opportunities throughout all phases of the CIA education from the associate degrees to the bachelor's and, and even into the master's programs 
for students to to learn about the restaurant industry and how to go about being their own boss and, and owning their own business. It's truly a, a culture of CIA that a lot of our students are coming to the CIA to become entrepreneurs that want to run their own restaurants, that want to build their their own ideas out into to real concepts for the world. So that is definitely a part of the culture. And you know, throughout the program, from working in our campus restaurants to doing your internships and all that, students are going to learn the ins and outs of being able to run and operate a restaurant and then extending even further for students that are in the food business management program we have a concentration called entrepreneurship where students will have the opportunity to participate in our innovation kitchen which in the picture on the screen you can see the word innovation kitchen behind the students and that's actually located at the egg which is our main student commons on campus and so this entrepreneurship concentration allows students to learn how to build a business plan and then potentially open that business on campus. So groups of two will come together to develop their business concept. And then just like the show Shark Tank, I don't know if uh, the audience watches that show as much as I do, um, but like on Shark Tank, the students will come together and they'll pitch their, their concepts and their business ideas to a panel of judges. And the winning idea will actually open for an entire semester on our campus in the egg. So um, that that picture is really a, an example of the type of restaurants that we, we have. Um, that's called Pincho, which it was everything on a stick. So they did everything from carnival fare to corn dogs and things like that to, to upscale Tobinaki type style uh, cuisines and things of that nature. But we've had everything from barbecue to fried chicken. We've had Mexican style street food. We've even had uh, ramen shops and quinoa bowls and things like that. So really a lot of cool concepts that students will really get the master the ins and outs of running and operating a business in the safety of, of the school. So you get to really practice those skill sets and uh, master you know, everything from the marketing and the business planning to the execution and staffing and even designing the logo and the uniform. So every single detail is in the hands of the students from this. And so you're really, again, getting that real world experience while you're still in school. Great. Um, so a lot of times students don't know that they're going to have a lot of fun as being a CIA student. So what is there to do at the CIA and, and do you offer any sports? Sure. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the, the hard work that goes into the classroom and the kitchens on campus, but the CIA students, you know, they, they, they're well-rounded people. And so they, they have as much fun playing as they do working in the kitchens and, and in our, our classrooms each and every day. So we, we've built a, a culture of fun as well. Um, the students, especially at the New York campus, they make the campus life their home. And so as a home away from home, we have activities throughout the week and on the weekends for students to get involved in. Um, the egg, which I've mentioned a few times, uh, the, the, the students' common area is uh, always has something going on at night. There's things like karaoke. There's bada bingo, which um, is really amazing because the students have the chance just playing bingo to win things like flat screen TVs and tickets to sporting events. So um, some pretty cool prizes that come out of things like that. There's a lot of activities that are offered off campus. They do regular trips uh, down to New York City for Broadway shows and for uh, baseball and hockey games and things like that. And they come at discounted tickets and things like that. So definitely makes it a lot easier for students to be able to participate. We also have a lot of clubs on campus. We have close to 50 different clubs available for students to participate in. Um, of course, a lot of them are related to food as most of us are, are kind of food geeks when it comes to that, but um, they do stem into a lot of different areas and different social and cultural elements of things. So um, if you have a group of friends that you want to start a club um, and for a specific focus, there's really you know endless opportunities for the types of activities that can get developed um, through the campus life uh, at the school. And then in terms of sports, we do have intercollegiate sports. So we actually compete competitively against other schools in basketball, volleyball, cross country, soccer, and tennis. And then we do have a full repertoire of intramural sports. And uh, Dom and I actually play on the faculty softball team every spring that plays against the students. And I don't know about you, Dom, but that's one of my most important times of the year when I get to get to go out and put on the cleats and, uh, and play some softball and, and get competitive Absolutely. with the other students. It's uh, it's really one of the, the fun parts about being on campus for sure. So without question, um, love getting active and uh, getting out there and playing sports with all the kids. 
That's great. Yes, I agree. That is um, a really fun time. It's just nice to, um, I think, for the, you know, the chefs to be able to kind of get to know the students on a personal level. Um, and then it's reflected back in the classroom. So there's that level of comfort that so they can really show and, and you know, majority or, you know, all of the staff and faculty at the CI, you know, their goal is to help students along. So in any way that we can have fun with them and get to know them personally, it only helps them in the classroom. So I agree, Robert. Definitely. Um, one question, and we're getting a lot of these questions um, coming through on the Q and A. It's about scholarships. You know, finances is always on all of our students' minds. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how um, scholarships are awarded at the college, and are they automatic? You know, do students need to do any extra work after they're accepted? Sure, definitely an important area to cover. Um, and the CIA definitely has plenty of opportunities for students. Uh, we offer both merit-based scholarships that come directly from CIA, and then students also are eligible to submit their federal FAFSA form for uh, additional aid coming directly from the government. So over 90% of our students qualify for financial aid coming into our program. And specifically for the merit-based scholarships, students are automatically reviewed for those scholarships upon being accepted to the program. So there really aren't any additional essays or applications that you need to submit um, for those merit scholarships. Those are things that'll be added to your award package once you've been accepted to the program. So as students looking at the college as prospective students and you want to know, you know, what, what type of scholarships am I eligible for? Very important to complete your application with us and get admitted to the college so that way we can start to work with you on the financial aid side of things. And, you know, we're really going to be here to, to help you through that process and we'll work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, every single admitted student that comes to the CIA is going to get paired up with an enrollment manager and a financial aid advisor who's going to work with you directly to, to make sure that you're maxing out your aid and make it as affordable as possible for you to, to attend the college. So we will work as closely with you as you, as you want us to in that regard, um, and we'll help you through that process um, really from start to finish. So very important part of that element is the one-on-one -on -one attention that you're going to get from, from the CIA. Um, in addition to the scholarships that students receive when they're entering the program, we do also have ongoing opportunities for students to apply for additional aid throughout the program. We have a special website that admitted students can um, and enrolled students can go on to called CHEF, which is spelled uh, with a dollar sign, S-H-E-F. Um, and on that site, there's constant posts going on for um, active applications available for scholarships that students can, can look into and look to build their financial aid that way. So very important to keep in mind that just because you enroll in the college doesn't mean that the, uh, the financial aid process has to stop. There are continuing opportunities for more aid. Great. Um, so, Robert, uh, we had um, a few of these questions coming through too. Um, some interested juniors that are going to be seniors, and we also have some adult students that mentioning that they wanted to start the application process, which is fantastic. Um, how difficult is the CI application, and what kind of student is the CI looking for? Definitely. Um, really, with the application process, it's really straightforward. Um, it's really three easy steps in order to get your application to the college submitted. Uh, you're able to go directly to our website, which is www.ciachef.edu, to fill out our online application. Or if you're using the Common App, we can accept the Common Application as well. And then from there, after we get your application, you'll need to submit your, your official transcripts from high school or from college if you've been to any college credits uh, previously. We also will require a short essay that you'll have to submit where we're just looking to get to know more about you, uh, what your passion for food is, what type of career goals you have, really just a way for our review board to get some more information about who you are as a person. And then we require a letter of recommendation um, that can come from anybody who isn't a direct family member. However, an important thing to note is that if you get your letter of recommendation from a CIA graduate, uh, that letter's worth a thousand dollar scholarship. So a one-time thousand dollar scholarship is available for um, getting a letter of recommendation from the alumni. So um, if you don't know any alumni, you know, get out there, ask. If you, you know, start start tapping your connections um, because it's an easy way to to get a thousand dollar scholarship uh, for your for your education. And then last but not least, as I mentioned before, um, you'll submit your federal FAFSA form for any additional federal aid that you'll be eligible for. Um, but in terms of 
reviewing applicants for the program. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term holistic in terms of colleges reviewing applicants, but we really do take a holistic approach to reviewing our applicants. Um, there isn't one number here or one number there that we focus on. Um, the average GPA for students coming into the college is about a 3.0, but we really bring in students from, from different areas of the, the spectrum in terms of, of GPA. Um, you know, there's 4.0s out there that can't boil water, and there's 2.0s that can make you a four-course meal in an hour. So we really take into account the, the element of the students' passion for the industry, um, what their experience is like, and then really take a good look at the letters of recommendation um, to, to find well-rounded students that are going to make a great fit to uh, the CIA way of life. So all really important elements. Great. So um, final question, Robert, before we jump into our Q&A. Um, what should students be doing between now and when they start at CIA? Yeah, this, is a, this is a great question, and it's something that I kind of wish I'd had a chance to ask before I started the program. Um, but, you know, it, it's really about diving into your passion for food. Um, you know, as, as culinarians, as as you know, future chefs and, and wanting to be a part of this industry, it's really about repetition and, and, and mastering your skills and your techniques. So, you know, from the start, you know, devour everything you can, cook at home as much as you can. If you're able to, to get a job in the industry, you know, working part time, getting some experience that way, that's great. But, you know, also take the time to, to read about the chefs in the industry. As I mentioned earlier, you know, referencing Thomas Keller, you know, he's just one of many names of, of influencers that have had a real impact on the industry and, and future chefs that have come after him. So, you know, look at, at finding a hero to emulate. You know, I know growing up, it was important for me in terms of, of, of sports to, to idolize, you know, different athletes when I was, you know, playing baseball and football growing up. The same thing applies to, to working in a kitchen and developing your skill set. Um, you know, find somebody to, to, to emulate and, and find somebody to, to follow their career path. There's so many inspirational people, um, you know, just devour it and stay as active as you can because, you know, food's about that repetition and, and, and mastering those skills. So, um, you know, any experience is good experience. Great, Robert. Well, we really appreciate um, you taking the time to speak to all of the students today. Definitely. For all of your insight, um, for all of the students, thank you so much for submitting your questions. We are going to transition now into our live Q&A with Robert. Um, we did get quite a few questions, so what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of time and answer as many as we can, Robert. Um, okay. And the ones that we're not able to get to for all the students on the call, we, don't worry, we will follow up with you either later today or tomorrow. Um, yeah, so let's jump into um, the first few questions that I received and we are continuing to get them, Robert, is about the resident halls. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit, I know you touched on this a little bit, but can you share a little bit about um, what the different style resident halls are, um, as well as if you're a culinary student, will you be living with an other culinary students? Is it possible to live with baking students um, and share about how that works? Sure. Um, you know, we have a lot of different options at our New York campus for, for housing. So we have traditional style dormitories, which are um, either going to be doubles or triples. So you'll either have one roommate or two. Um, from there, for our upperclassmen, we also have options to live in Adirondack style lodges, which are really cool because they're set up in a suite format. So it'll either be four singles that share a common space in a bathroom, or it'll be two doubles that share a common space in a bathroom. And then for our juniors and seniors, we also have uh, apartment style living in our townhome complex. So in those townhouses, we actually have eight singles. So it'll be eight individuals sharing um, a full living space, a full kitchen, the whole, the whole repertoire for that. Um, and you basically get to live in, in your own apartment, your, you know, during your last couple years on campus. So, you know, those different options for students really allows you to, you know, choose the type of living environment that you're looking for and that you'll be the most comfortable in. Um, in terms of finding a roommate, uh, for freshmen, I'm sure that that's definitely a, a pressing question for you um, in terms of getting your first roommate coming into a college atmosphere. We do go through um, some, some feedback from students on their personalities. So you'll fill out a little questionnaire about yourself, you know, what your hobbies are, what you like to do so that way our residence life office can compare students up with people that you know will most likely get along in terms of their personality and what they're into and, and things like that which could very well mean that you'll you'll end up living with a baking student or 
or one of our hospitality students. So uh, we do mix that up a little bit. You know, students, we don't just pair you with other culinary students. There is definitely a chance that you'll get to live with a, a baker or a hospitality student, but um, that just helps you kind of expand your network. Um, one of the most important and you know best things about CIA is that ability to connect with with other foodies and people that you know have mastered skills in a number of different areas. So having a friend that's a baker is never a bad thing, especially when they start to get into the different areas of the program and they're bringing home boxes of cake and cookies throughout the week. Um, it definitely adds to the the freshman 50 at CIA, but um, you know it's definitely a cool opportunity to to have friends that uh, that work on the sweet and savory side of things. Great. Um, Robert, there were some uh, decent amount of questions where students were asking, do you had mentioned about AM and PM classes? Mm -hmm. Do they get to pick if they want AM or PM? Um, will they get to do both? I mean, and who on campus is able to help them? Or is there anyone that they're going to be working with in regards to helping them schedule their classes? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, initially, you won't have a choice on whether you're AM or PM students. Your schedule will get get built coming into your um, your first semester of classes and you'll be placed in either an AM or a PM set of classes but you'll also um, flip in that as you move through the program so typically as a student you'll get to experience both AM and PM classes throughout the program so um, you'll work directly with your academic advisor as I touched on a little bit briefly um, in the beginning of the presentation that you're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your academic and career advisor who's gonna be there throughout your time Time at the college to not only help build your your schedule and build your classes that you're going to take but they'll also be there to help guide you through finding your externship site finding your first job when you leave the college and helping you prepare your resume and all of those different elements that go into you know the graduation process and, and stepping out into the real world you know they'll be your your first stop to uh, to really help with all those things so you'll have resources from the day you walk into the program to the day you leave it and beyond so a uh, very important part of the process Great, Robert. Um, we had a few students mention that they have um, received um, college credits, um, either through a community college or have taken um, AP courses and taken the exams where they've received credits. Um, are those credits available? And are there any credits, if a student attended community college, let's say already, are there any credits that would not be accepted at the CIA? Absolutely. So we can definitely work with transfer credits for any of our academic classes. Students are actually able to transfer in up to 60 credits, I believe. Is that right, Dom? Uh, yes, correct. So there are plenty of options for that. However, we don't accept transfer credits for any of our hands-on based classes. That's an important thing to keep in mind. So uh, like I said in the beginning, in terms of having experience before you start at CIA, you know, we're bringing students in to teach you the CIA way of cooking. So um, whether you, you've gone through, um, you know, classes in your high school or gone through any college-based classes in, in culinary arts, um, you, you will go through the full hands-on curriculum with the CIA. Um, but in terms of those academic programs and those academic classes, um, definitely submit any credits that you've received from either those AP credits um, or through um, any community colleges that you may have been to, because we can definitely work with those, those credits for transfer. Great. Um, Robert, we had a, a student who asked if uh, the GI Bill is accepted at the CIA, and is there anyone that, you know, that this student can work with um, if they are a veteran student? Absolutely. So we we have a long-standing partnership with with the military. In fact, back when the the college first opened back in 1946, it was started out specifically for World War II veterans. So it's really kind of woven through um, the the tissue of the CIA and really kind of its roots that uh, that that connection to the military. But we definitely accept the post 9/11 GI Bill, and we are a yellow ribbon school. So depending on the uh, type of benefits you have and the percentage of coverage that you have. Have, um, can potentially cover nearly the entire cost of tuition so um, can be a really great benefit for students and once you're accepted into the program you'll be able to work directly with your enrollment manager to submit uh, the documents that you'll need for that all we really need is a certificate of eligibility for you to utilize those benefits um, but we do have a, uh, a veterans uh, counselor that will work directly with students uh, his name is Michael Brown and um, you know if you have specific questions we'd be happy to share his contact info with you um, to, to get you any more specific answers to your questions. Great, Robert. Um, a couple students asked about uh, 
if there's any opportunities to for, for tutoring on campus is there a place on campus that they would go to to receive extra help um, is that and is that free absolutely that's that's a fantastic question uh, we have our library learning commons on campus um, in fact at the New York campus the library we have is the second largest culinary library in the world which is pretty amazing to to be a part of and see the different volumes of texts and things and resources we have there um, but in that building is is our learning strategy center where students can go to receive help from anything from their hands-on classes through all their different academic classes and they're available for free tutoring sessions if you need. Um, there's actually a knife skill station and a piping station for students to go and practice cutting potatoes, onions, working on all the different knife cuts because that's something that will be a part of your education from start to finish and then really a part of your career from, from here on to the end. Um, and then also the piping work, which is you know, more for the bacon and pastry students. However, as a culinary student, I didn't, I forgot to mention this little gem, is that you'll actually spend three weeks in uh, introductory to bacon and pastry. So you will get some cross training there. You'll learn some, some basic fundamentals in bacon and pastry. Um, but for me personally, that was actually the longest three weeks of my life. I am not a natural baker. So I spent a considerable amount of time practicing my piping skills um, to, to no avail. I disappointed my, my bacon and pastry chef regularly with those skills, but um, I did practice and tried my best. <laughs> No, that's great, Robert. You actually um, read my mind too, or our students' minds, because that was actually one of my next questions. Um, we had some students ask if they would receive any baking courses. Oh, good. Well, yes. Yeah. So, so you'll 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 get three weeks in that, and I hope that you enjoy it more than I did. So, <laughs> that's all I have to say. <laughs> um, no, that's great. Um, so I'm actually going to jump in for this question, Robert. It's all right. We had a couple students ask about um, coming to visit campus. So obviously, you know, as soon as we are able to host you on our New York campus, we are going to be sending out invitations to students via text, email, um, as well as phone calls. So you will be receiving that as soon as that's possible. Our hope is that, you know, potentially in the coming fall semester that we'll be having some smaller scale events where we would be able to show students around. Um, so for everyone on the call today, um, fear not, we, as soon as we're able to host you, we will let you know. Um, at our California and Texas campuses, if you're interested in those campuses, um, information will be going out to that for those campuses as well. Um, because, so we really want to host you. Um, we're just meeting for um, it, to ensure that it's safe for our students and getting our approval from our state and local officials. Um, Robert, um, we had a couple of students ask about the chef instructors. I know you addressed this and you talked um, really in depth about you know, their backgrounds, but what's it like? What are the chef instructors like? Um, I know that you know when we play softball, the students get to know on a personal level. Do they have the opportunity to get to know the chefs on a personal level inside the classroom? What is it like, um, you know, how supportive are they, are they um, to helping students? Definitely. Um, I mean, the chef instructors are, are the backbone of, of, of the CIA. They come from so many diverse backgrounds, skill sets, um, different areas of the industry, and, and they're truly experts in their field. So the wealth of knowledge that they have um, is really second to none. And for a lot of them, they're also graduates from the college, which makes a really big difference because they know what it's like to be the student on a day in and out, day out basis. So, you know, they understand what you're going through the learning process and, and they're teachers. So they're there to help guide students um, through each and every part of the process. So if you have questions, if there's things that you need to work on, they'll, they'll be there to help guide you. Um, in fact, a number of our chef instructors will go to the Learning Strategy Center with students to help them work on their knife cuts and give them that one-on-one -on -one attention if they need it. So the, the best advice that I can give to a student is don't be shy about asking questions of your instructors. Um, you know, they're, they're serious people that are there to get the job done in a lot of ways because it is a kitchen and, you know, you, you have demands to, to meet in terms of quality control and, and getting orders out to, to either students that are dining in, in the kitchens or um, paying customers that are that are visiting the campus but at the end of the day it, it's it's a school and you're going to be there learning from them so their their resources and their ability to help will, will be continuing throughout the entire time so um, don't be afraid of them get to know them they're they're people um, that want to see you succeed so if you if you put in the effort and and, and put in the the work they're going to be there to, to help guide you throughout the whole process great robert so um, we are, you know, we're, we're running out of time a little bit, but I just wanted to, I think we have time for a few more questions, Robert. Uh, sure. So, uh, 
Just we had a, a couple questions about the diversity of students on campus. Can you share a little bit about um, the the student population, maybe where the students um, you know come from, both domestically and internationally, um, as well as um, you know the age groups, maybe? Sure. Um, if there's one thing about the CIA student or the typical CIA student is that there really isn't a typical CIA student. We, we bring in students from all over the country and, and really all over the world, um, especially at the New York campus. We have students from all 50 states and over 40 countries represented at any given time on our campuses. So um, really, uh, there's a wealth of opportunities to not only, um, you know, connect with new people, but connect with different types of food. Um, you know, we look at the food industry and, you know, having worked in a, a number of kitchens myself, um, the diversity throughout the industry is, is just a reflection of the diversity at CIA and that you're going to have really the opportunity to, to meet and understand not just a world of flavors, but a world of people. So it's really a melting pot in a, in a number of different ways. Um, and I, I, I cherish my time at the college, especially for that factor, of the not just the diversity of the food, but the diversity of the people as well. Hey Robert, um, so I think we have time for two more questions. Um, we obviously we've talked a lot about food, um, and the students are really excited about it. Um, we had multiple questions about our meal plan. Um, okay. so what students are able to kind of eat? Um, how does you know family meal work? Um, the different facilities on campus. So can you share a little bit about um, you know what the students are able to you know after their class what they're able to eat? The different styles of food um, is where sure. they can get food. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we we pride ourselves on having the best meal plan in the country because um, the the meals you're going to eat are directly coming out of the curriculum. So. Um, whether you're taking the class or not, you'll have the opportunity to eat through all the different kitchens that we have on campus. So that's your meal plan is, is really the curriculum. So as I was talking about before, you know, being able to work through international cuisines and all those different classes, those are actually production style classes where you're opening for service each and every day, cooking for your fellow students. So um, on a given day, you can, you know, roll through the Cuisines of Asia class when it's sushi day. Um, on another day, you could roll through the, the Cuisines of America America's class on um, Southern Amer Southern North America Day where they do um, soul food like fried chicken, they'll do crab cakes, um, they'll do ribs, they do barbecue and different things like that in that class. So just a lot of really great opportunities to eat your way through the curriculum. Um, but then you'll also, when you're participating in those classes, you'll, you'll be eating that food as well. Um, I don't know how engrossed uh, some of you are in the industry, but in the industry we call it family meal, um, when it's staff meal essentially, when everybody comes together, the front of the house, the back of the house, um, and everyone shares a meal right before service. So um, we do the same thing with our students. So after the conclusion of service, everybody will, will clean up and they'll make themselves a plate of food, um, and they develop camaraderie with each other through, through that process of getting to eat through the curriculum um, in class and then outside of class as well. Um, and then there's also the egg, which I I've referenced a few times, which few times, which has a has a bunch of different dining options. Um, there's the student-run line, which is our high-volume production kitchen, where culinary arts students will serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner each and every day. Uh, well, they'll do like three to 400 students that come through. Um, so it is, you know, high intensity, but it's really high quality uh, plant forward options for food. Um, so students are getting, you know, to experience some different cooking techniques um, and different types of, of, of you know, ingredients and, and produce to be able to uh, to experience that way. Um, and then in the center of the egg, um, we have some different options. There's a grill, there's a pizza station, there's a noodle bar. Um, literally at CIA, we call it the freshman 50 and instead of the freshman 15 at most schools, because uh, you're going to you're going to eat as much as you learn. That's great, Robert. So our final question came from one of our students. And I think it's a great last question. And, and for the students, if we didn't get to answer all of your questions um, or um, if it's very specific to you, like I said, don't worry, we will be following up with you um, shortly to make sure that all of your questions are answered. Um, but Robert, um, uh, one of our students wanted to know why you chose the CIA um, and what was the lasting impact it had on you and your career? Sure. Um, you know, I, I 
like I said, I, I always cooked growing up um, through through the end of middle school and high school. I always cooked at home for my friends and family, but um, it was kind of the, the triple backup plan in my eyes. Uh, originally, I was going to be a New York Yankee, but that didn't work out. Um, and then um, <laughs> I actually went and uh, I got my bachelor's degree in journalism and public relations before I attended CIA. So when I came to CIA, my goal from the very beginning was to combine my passion for communications with my passion for food. And so so um, from there, I've been able to not only have experience in the industry, but now working in my role in admissions, uh, where I get to combine both of the things that I love. And um, that was really what, what drew me to CIA was the idea that I could apply one of my favorite passions in the world, which was food, with my other favorite passion, which was communications and, and writing and, and public speaking and doing all those different things. So, um, you know, it was really a special opportunity to be able to to pursue those things simultaneously and, um, you know, following in the footsteps of one of my heroes, um, who's was Anthony Bourdain, um, which his anniversary is actually yesterday, I believe, which, you know, yes. it's hard to believe it's been two years, but um, he's a CIA graduate and reading his book, Kitchen Confidential, was um, one of the most important things of my life was reading that book and, um, you know, seeing that there are so many different outlets for food and so many different ways to approach um, something that people experience every single day. Um, there's really nothing that this industry doesn't touch. And, you know, coming to CIA, um, you know, changed my life in so many different ways um, that it's, it's kind of hard to put in the words in some instances. But, um, you know, if you're looking for, you know, a future and you love food and, you know, you're looking for a, a career that's filled with passion and opportunity, um, there's really no better place to, to start than the CIA and really no better industry to go into. Great. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for, um, you know, your, for answering all of our questions. Um, mm -hmm. We really appreciate everything. To all of our students, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, like I said, if we weren't able to get to all of your questions, we're going to have an admissions counselor follow up with you. Um, if you are a high school junior, I'm going to be a senior next year. Our application um, is open for fall of 2021. Um, and then for any students who might be adult students or international students, our applications for fall 2020 as well as spring of 2021 and fall of 2021 are open. So you can follow that on our website. And then if there's any other additional questions, please feel free um, to email myself or Robert anytime. You can also email the admissions inbox at admissions at culinary.edu. Thank you again to everyone for joining us today. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and hopefully we'll see you on campus soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.